know what? I want to rock this thing one time. Brooke, roll the crazy music. Get everybody <laughs> fired up for Jake. Let's do this. What is that? I like that high. I like that hi hat uh, th that's at the end. Uh, real quick, everybody, I want to welcome Eric Jake with to um, to our to our stage. If you're just joining us, uh, things that I can say about Jake with it's a very long list and it's a good list. Um, last time that I saw Eric, he was actually teaching me. Actually, he was teaching me to get this book, which resides on my shelf, "The Joy of Search." And all about all about how to search Google and do it like a savant. And uh, Jake with always he always makes my mind explode. Whether it's quote unquote doubling the bullion, which I call it doubling the bullion, where you put the same thing in different strings. I mean, within parts of your strings and nesting. Um, this is a great book. Jake with encouraged me to pick it up. Uh, I've got extra copies at the house. If anybody wants to stop by and have a drink later, hint hint, Ronnie. Um, Without any further ado, Eric Jacob from Seek Out, let's rock. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, we have about 30 minutes and I'm gonna run through some fairly complex ideas, but I've tried to simplify it. Um, I've been doing search for over 20 years and I love to work with the largest companies and the most creative recruiters to figure out how to find difficult candidates. So although I'm gonna show you elements within Seek Out, a lot of the concepts I'm gonna share are relevant to all your searches and all the different platforms that are out there. So. No further ado, let's jump in. I like to kind of show people my environment. I think people should have a, an idea of what, what you're going to see on my screen today. It is a Windows environment. It is working with Chrome. It does have a licensed version and a free version of LinkedIn and a licensed version of Seekout. And then I have my Chrome extensions that you may see me tap into and use here as well, plus a good dose of curiosity and tenacity. So uh, I like to usually start most of my presentations this way. Everybody on this call, I am positive, have used these operators in the past. I'm not gonna talk about these. You already know these. I just wanted to say, let's go beyond this. Adding a few more ors or a few more nots is not the best way to build a better string. Using more complexity and more thought into your searches can really help, no matter if you're using Seekout or the competitors or LinkedIn or Monster Career Builder Dice, Indeed, any of the tools that support, as well as your ATS and CRMs, searching is document retrieval. Understand how the algorithms are built in the document retrieval space is critical, regardless of how each vendor has tweaked those algorithms. They generally per persist on the common rules. So I'm gonna share with you these rules today. These are five that we use inside Seekout and may be used inside some of your vendors. I know of dozens of vendors that use at least one or two of these, the asterisk being the one that's most common that people use. But there are hacks that people have published on LinkedIn free that use field names. We know we can use field delimiters inside Google as well. So we're gonna talk a little bit about using a field name and a colon. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we use asterisks, tildes, carrots, and then what Brian was referring to using in Seekout, what we call a true colon Y, is a way to include words that are preferred rather than just must have terms, which is kind of unique, but this is very important because it totally works on changing your sort order. We know that most recruiters can filter, 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 apply multiple filters to cut, cut, cut down. I'm of the premise that I don't want to cut down the list. I would rather have 1% showing of a million people that match the criteria, but they're in a particular sort order so that the best are on top. And I'm gonna talk about how the algorithms tend to do that using this functionality. So before I go in and show specific syntax on our tool, I wanna just kind of lay the menu to, these are five things if you're not using, or ask your vendors, are these features that you can use inside your applicant tracking system, CRM, in other search tools? And if so, they may have similarities to what I'm about to show you, okay? These are some of the rules. Have you ever done a search and kind of went, gee, why does this order come up this way? 
I'm not getting the order I want. And so you start adding ors and nots and start excluding things and combining things. Well, most of the search engines that are using um, modern search algorithms, not natural language, but modern algorithms that are related to um, counting or looking at the keyword phrases. Many of these are going to highlight these keyword phrases. So yes, we notice that when we run a search that the documents or the profiles that have a high number of hits, the high frequency of the individual terms or phrases generally come up higher to the top. We call it as being more qualified. But not always is that the right idea. And I'm going to show how to limit that so you can actually say, use this as a search criteria, but make it not a sort criteria. Okay, and that's very important. And I'll show you some examples of why that's important in a moment. We know that all the terms, if we're doing for an or statement or multiple ands, we can say, if there's 10 terms in my search, it adds up the count of each of the terms and sums that in the, basically the document that has the most sum or the largest total hits generally comes up to the top. But then there's some things that are happening that are kind of strange. What happens when there's a tie? How are ties broken? If two documents have the same, say, 10 hits, well, it's the document that has maybe eight out of the 10 terms is going to come to the top. The total count is equal, but having more terms is perceived as better in sort order. Maybe the second document only has five terms, and they have each term twice, so they get a point of 10. But if you have nine out of 10 terms or eight out of 10 terms, rather than five out of 10 terms, even though the total number of hits is the same, more is better generally. And then it gets a little more complicated than that. Actually, each word is not exactly equal in most of these things. So rare or a word that is not as frequent in the data set is perceived as more valuable. So if we take a common term, let's take a common term like the word Microsoft. It can be a software product. It can be a company. It can be um, used in many different ways on people's profiles. OK, Google, many different ways on people's profiles. Facebook, many different ways. It can be a product. It can be an ad word. It can be using their tool sets. OK, so because those words are high frequency, they're not very rare. But if you take a smaller company like SeekOut or HRTX, a conference, or SourceCon, or a term that's not common, like a particular new software product, that rarity of that word in all the documents, it doesn't matter if you have a million documents or 10 documents, it looks at, is that word common amongst the data set? And if it's uncommon or rarer, it gets just a little bit micro boost. It gets just a little bit more point value because it's rare, okay? So that's why sometimes a, ra a word that is unique, that is in a document frequently, comes up very high in your search. Well, then number five also says things like, well, what if the document is 1,000 words and another document is 50 words and we have the same number of hits? Well, the number of hits in a 50-word document is going to give that a, basically a boost or move it up the stack versus 10 hits in a thousand word document, okay? So each of these things kind of stacks and, and there's basically algorithms that are doing these things in the background. And then each vendor can then say, well, let's boost certain things. Let's make where the person is sitting or, or LinkedIn, the number of connections you have and who you're connected to, let's make that a factor in moving who you see first. And some interesting diversity things are happening in some of the search engines now that are giving, dividing the set of diversity on different pages so that you can see more diversity throughout your searches. So, and then there's other rules that are more microscopic that are all influencing what you see when you build a keyword search or use the facets and filters on the left-hand side. So it's got, it, I've seen in red dozens and dozens of white papers from brilliant people who are in this space building these things. But as a researcher, you need to understand this as you're building searches. Think about the words you're using and think about the frequency and the way the words work. Okay, so let me give an example when you can combine some of these things and what it means in an example. Then I'm going to go in and actually do these things. So the first one is look at past companies field. We can add the prefix past company. So we're not looking in all the profile. We're just looking in the past company field. 
and we're looking for the word Microsoft, Google, or Facebook. Or we're actually combining that with the state, California, Texas, and Massachusetts. Now, because Microsoft is a company that is older than Google or Facebook, it has more alumni. More people have left Microsoft than Google or Facebook. And since Facebook is the newest company, not as old, not as many employees, it has the least number of alumni. So because in that field, in documents, Facebook is considered a rarer word than Microsoft. So if you ran a search like this, it would give you on page one more Facebook people than it would Microsoft people. Okay, well, the way you overcome that is you can add this little tilde on the end of each search. And what it does is it neutralizes it. It says, don't use the rareness factor in the search criteria. So I'm saying now when I run a search, look for anybody who has a past company, one of these three, and I don't care that Microsoft has more than Facebook or Google, make them all equal so the rareness factor is omitted from the search ranking. Okay, and I'll show that in a moment. Same thing with large states. If you're searching in multiple states, California in most databases, LinkedIn profile and seek out, has more people in it. Therefore, there's more California profiles than a small state like Massachusetts. So when you run a search and you're just searching by state, you're gonna come up with a page one of a lot of Massachusetts people. But by adding this carrot or zero on the end, I'm saying pick any one of these three. I don't care what the field says. They're all been neutralized. It doesn't matter. Don't make the state part of the ranking criteria. I don't care as long as they're in one of those three states because I have an office in all three of those locations. All right, continuing on. I'm gonna show that you can do the same thing with nice to have words by adding a true colon Y, either at the beginning here in the blue or at the end or statements, you really don't care where you put it. By just adding this true colon Y, I'm saying it'd be nice if the person has a headline of recruit. And because I have a wildcard, recruiting, recruiter, recruiting, recruited are all gonna come up. Sourcing, sorcerer are all gonna come up. But the wildcard on the end has a, a, the ability to neutralize and make the headline of a recruiter because a lot few people have the word sorcerer in their headline. So this rare word would normally bring up more point value than the word recruiter and therefore skew the order. Okay, talent acquisition, same way. I want people to spell acquisition wrong all the time by adding a tilde on the end. I'm gonna get the misspellings of talent acquisition. Once again, both the asterisk and the tilde neutralizes it and gives it no rarity points and therefore it'll work just the same way. So just looking at this, this statement saying, it'd be nice to influence the sort and give me more people that have these current headlines at the top of my sort, but I don't care which of these headlines, it just, they're all equal, all three of them. Down below, I can do the same, oops, I keep doing that, the, the profile here, let me go back into that, my apologies. There we go. The last one is, is simply cities, same common thing. You're doing a nationwide search these days since COVID, we're doing a lot of nationwide searches, but we are a Seattle-based company. I know that Bellevue and Redmond are suburbs of Seattle that people live in, but Redmond is a much smaller city, half the size of, of Bellevue, and Seattle is a much larger city than both of these. So I'm gonna say if you live in one of these cities, I don't care which one, give twice the points or make it doubly important if you live in these other two cities, Portland and Sacramento, it's helpful, but not as helpful as Redmond. And I would prefer you live on the West Coast. So you can say, I've been somewhere on the West Coast by saying, be in one of these states, preferably one of these cities, even though you're doing a nationwide search. Okay, so this makes it a lot easier to run one search rather than having to do variations of multiple locations and doing individual searches. So now let's actually go in and see how some of this stuff looks. I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna share it. Oops, there we go. So a typical search, and let me know in the, in the chat guys, if this is uh, viewable in, in, in a size, I can expand a little bit so you can kind of see some of this a little bit easier for you. Uh, the, 
most of the of the recruiters that I know, oops, that's not the direction I was going. There we go. Most of the recruiters I know will jump into a keyword box or use a facets on the left side. They'll select a particular title using title fields and pop downs or a particular company, or they'll just write it in the box like so. And I can make this a little bit easier to read. There you go. So they may actually use an or statement to say, I'm looking for some Java people who have AWS. And, and typically, they'll give at least one title. And if they're clever, they'll add another title. These are the two common ways, maybe. There's many others. I'm just using simplicity here to say, this is a basic recruiter search. There's nothing wrong with this search. But just realize what it's going to do. When I look at the results, it's going to bring up the word AWS. It's going to look for Java. It's going to combine it with developer. And it's going to be finding these things. But notice that when I see this, it's, remember the fact that it says if you have all the terms, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's eight terms here. If it has all eight, and this person has all eight, you can count them there, and has more of the eight, it's going to give it due process. So this guy comes up, and it's going to be giving unnatural sequencing to someone who has a long resume. Think about that. If you have more titles, you're generally older and have been more experienced, OK? So someone who has more titles is getting preferential treatment on the search because they have lots of them, and they have lots of those fields, OK? So that can do in, because of redundancy. Frequency is generally done by longer resumes. If the person has Java and J2EE, but JEE is the is the less popular version, the J and JEE -E is Java, but Java spelled out like this is the most popular. The person who has this is gonna come up higher in the search because of the rarity factor, okay? So how do we modify that? Well, we can go in here and we can make some changes. We can add that, but now we can come in and say, let's put a boost zero on the end, let's neutralize this. Any one of those is just fine. I'm not going to give you extra points because of that. I don't want every word on the thing. I want it in the titles. But I don't care which title. I'm not going to give you more points because you say software engineer, even though developer is less frequently used. I want to be equal on these. So I can hit caret 0 here. And now if you have a software engineer or the title developer, it's equal. Now when I come up, I'm building the search. Everybody here has the AWS in one of the versions of Java I'm looking for. And these words are being showed. When you see this preview, it says it has these elements and it counts. There may be seven AWSs, three Javas, one or two software, but it counts and summarizes that this person has these four elements. The sum of those elements makes him number one. He comes up higher than the person who has these elements. OK, but because I neutralized the sort order, I'm now not looking for someone. What's left is AWS. So when I see the first person here, this person has three AWSs that are visible on this preview page. And if I actually go into the profile and look at the profile, they have a lot more than that throughout their resume. So I'm neutralizing and saying, I'm not giving you sorting points on the word Java or sorting points based on the word software engineer. I'm completely changing the order in the stack. I can go further. Not only can I neutralize these things, but let's go to the next tab. We'll build upon that. And I can say, OK, that's where I neutralize. But now let's neutralize AWS also. And then let's say, because I'm going to use nice to have, this is my true colon Y, I'm going to say it would be nice to have if the person worked for an airline currently. So airline wildcard. Delta Airlines, Southwest Airlines, American Airlines, one of the airlines is going to come up because they are currently in an airline. Okay, I don't care which one. Okay, And I'm going to say that's a priority to me. And it'd be a priority if they're in the Dallas, Texas area. Look in Dallas first, give a little bit more points by boosting that up. And then if, if they are in Dallas, at least look in the state of Texas because that's where the job is. But I'm doing a nationwide search. I'm searching in all of the US, and I'm finding 104,000, same as I did in the previous search. So when I refine my search, it's still going to find the same count. But now of the 105 people, 
people who work in the Dallas metro area that work for airlines are now coming to the top. And, the, and they all have AWS and a version of the word Java. They just aren't giving undue weight on those words. They must have those words or a variant of the or statement. But now I'm giving preferential treatment. This saves you a ton of time. Now, what's fun about that is you can then apply all the other filters you need. So if I want to say female veterans, okay, that have work um, for more than this many, let's say the last ne next more than three years. Now, although I drop it down to 49 people, once again, the sort order that comes up is people who have worked in airlines, if they have, they come up higher. And if they're in the Dallas area, they come up higher. But otherwise, I'm using the keywords I'm looking for, and it's coming up strong. Okay, so as the numbers cut down, I'm going to say, well, now I'm going to take veterans off, and I'm going to say, just look at the 15,000 that are women, and my pie. So now I'm looking for airline in the Dallas area, a woman who's in the Dallas area that has a three years experience. So the veteran cut it down a little too much. There was no one that met the preferred terms. So you saw everything else that followed after the preferred term. But the sort order will maintain as you apply the other filters. I can also, you know, add once again any specific locations. I can rule out anybody that exclusion. We have a filter for excluding heavyweights. This is an exclusion filter we built that says take out all the directors, the partners, the founders, the CEOs, CFOs, CIOs. That one check drops our search down. But once again, she wasn't one of those things, so she stays right where she was at the top of the file. Okay, so realize that searches can be built with, the, you know, each element can be either ignored in the search results or added to the search results. In this case, I'm adding to the search results. And although I don't care that Texas is in Dallas, if, they, if they're in Texas and they don't have the city Dallas, they're still going to get a point because it's adding to the value that they're in because everybody, else, of course, has a state. Okay. I want to get out of technical minute and just kind of show this uh, an homage to my good friend Shally. You know, if someone goes in and puts a simple search in LinkedIn, uh, seek out or any major tool and puts just two words, recruit and, and source. OK, most of the tools are going to do the stemming for you. It's going to add the S's on recruit, the ING's, the ED's. That's called stemming. And most of them are smart enough to do that now. So when we do this, we find the word recruit and the word sourcing in Shally's profile throughout. Out of all the 168 million in LinkedIn with those two words, Shally comes up number one in our index, our map, our, the way we build our algorithm. Now, when you do that, we don't know how many recruits he has. He may have 27 of those and 47 of those, but they combined means that he comes up high. And when you look at his summary, he has a ridiculously long experience list of times. So he has lots of these words not only on the preview page, but if you go into his actual profile, you see these words are quite deep throughout his profile. My good friend Ronnie, same similar way. He's worked with us before. He has a good pedigree where he's worked with a lot of, but the weight is going to someone with a long resume that has lots of specific words and variants of those words. So if you want to then modify and get to where you want to go, another way might be something like this. You might want to look for someone who is, if you're going to grow your recruiting team, someone who has past titles that have all the versions of the word recruit, recruiting and recruited, recruiter, recruitment. All those would be covered in that with a wild card. And these wild cards don't exist in LinkedIn Recruiter and many of the other tools that are out there. But with Seekout, you can use the wild cards to get the variants. And then you can say, I don't really care in their past titles which ones they have. I'm not going to wait to the experience. So don't give you more points just because you have a lot more titles in your past. That's how new people don't get jobs. OK, what you want to do is then focus on maybe some skills they have. We can look in the skill function rather than looking in all the resume. We can add the prefix skills, which is the skills with inside the 50 skills you're allowed to put in your LinkedIn profile. And I can look for a recruit and it'll, and it'll find recruit tools that are related to that. LinkedIn will find LinkedIn recruiter as well as just the word LinkedIn. Source will find sourcing. So you can look for specific tools that are there. Now you can then say, those are the two must have. You must have one from this bucket and you must have one from this, but this one doesn't count towards the score or the order, okay? Now I can add 
five elements that are important to me. The, e the first one is easy. I can just rule out anybody who's a not. I can say anybody who's not, you know, take out anybody who's current title and engineer. I don't want to see them. Retired, no. And if you work as a recruiter in the Army or Navy, that's not the kind I'm looking for. So knots are easy. Most people are familiar with knots. And I like using knots with wild cards as well. So I can put a not engineer, not engineering, and it gets me a little bit more bang for my buck using my not commands. I think most of you are familiar with that. So those are common. But where less common is people using the variants here to actually use the sort order. So as I did before, although I'm using this as my criteria, these three items, where they live, what their headline, in other words, what their current job and how they describe themselves, their current company or their past company all influence the sort. So if you've previously worked for one of my target competitors that I like, and you currently work for them and currently do the job I like and live in the city I'm looking at, then I want you to the top of my list. And sure enough, these things start coming up the way you want them to if they have the right area I want. So the first couple are going to be California because they have a lot of the nuances I want. But as soon as I hit, let's update this search. When I hit update, it's now going to bring people that are more in the area that I'm looking for that has the weight that I want because this is important. They have worked in the companies that I find valuable. And then after the companies I'm looking for, then I'm going to look in my local area because that's what I prefer. So just realize that you can choose, then apply all the other filters, experience, years with the current company, you know, size of company, if that matters to you. These filters are important. I'm going to pause there, open it up for questions. Thank you for your time and attention. We do have the ability to um, do demos and, and show this to other folks as well. So if you are interested in, in using Seekout and trying it out, please don't hesitate to ask, and we will gladly um, offer you a, a, a some trinkets to go along with that. Just click on this link that will be provided. Copy it down here if you need it. My contact information is here, and I will. Ryan, Brian, how how did I do? Did did I help explain this in a way that people can get it? I was a little Dude. confused, but you know, it's, it's good. And what, what are you talking about? A little confused? Like he he went through it. I mean, like okay. First off, the feedback is insane. Like people were really engaged. They wish there was a way to to have zoomed in on the screen a little bit deeper to get some of the uh, search strings that you were using, particularly the search strings with the carrots um, that you had that you were using. Let's let's real quick. Let's if you've got a question for Eric, let's drop it in the chat. I'll put it up on the screen. We'll get to those as quickly as we can. Um, I know that there were a lot of people who were engaged. Um, yeah, and if you if you so so we will be sending out the information that uh, that Eric was sharing. However, if you want to get in the demo, go to the link there. If you want to get all the the swag and all that stuff, but uh, Brooke, I believe there might be a poll as well in in the room somewhere in the main room somewhere, uh, or go visit there. Uh, actually, probably better yet. Just go visit the Seekout booth, and you can do the same thing. You'll be able to schedule there, or at least say that you're interested, and we'll we'll make sure that uh, Eric honors the, uh, you know, the option to get the the idea uh, opportunity, I should say, to get the uh, swag. We got some questions coming in, I think. Right? Let me just we got to filter through some. Are these. those additional bullions only for Seekout, such as the tilde or the carrot? No. Uh, for example, you know, Bullhorn supports the ability to do the carrot. Um, Career Builder supports the carrot. So you can boost values because they support that. Um, Lexo supports almost all of them because they are very similar to what we do and how we index things. So the fact is, ask your vendors. You, they may have unpublished syntax that you don't know about that you might want to check with. You'd be surprised how many are using these things. Some of them are more complex and they strain their servers, so they disable them or hobble them. But many do have some of these features. People, of course, hate the fact that LinkedIn doesn't have wildcards and they have to type every version and, and variant out. But that's just the choice they've made when they built their algorithm. So ask your vendors, find out what they're using, what, they're not, what they've turned on, and, and we'll turn on if you complain about it. Okay. Now, one of the questions, uh, Royce, that was a great, a great question um, about if these bullions are only for seek out. 
What I was going to also ask is that, Eric, you know, what about the near function? I don't feel like I saw you use that in seek out. Um, is there, is the near function something that applies there as well as in other open web searches? Um, so, so Google uses the uh, around command to solve around the near command, problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have a, 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 a proximity search function, which is a tilde followed by a number. I wanted to show the misspelling in this in this particular training, and so I didn't highlight the tilde in a number because I didn't want to confuse it with the misspelling tilde only. But we okay. do have. Got it. Got it. And then um, X-Ray, Google, or Bing, uh, Noya. I'm not sure if I understand the question, but um, you know what I would add to the conversation is that you do get different results when you X-Ray on Google and Bing particularly for LinkedIn, that's been kind of, you can do that side by side. Um, what, uh, Eric, what, what do you, do you weigh in on whether Google or Bing are better for X-raying? Any, any comments there? So I tend to use Bing because let's face it, Microsoft owns LinkedIn. If you're going to be updating and making the changes, we all know that if you have a LinkedIn recruiter account or a LinkedIn free account, you see real-time updates. Anybody changes something, you get them very quickly. I believe Bing gets updates on their search engine probably the quickest because they're kind of in the family. And Google is kind of outside the family, and they may get the updates, but they don't get the updates and the changes quite as fast. So I think looking for Bing searches and the way the algorithm in Bing is very much like I described our algorithm, where it's based on proximity, it's based on saturation, it's based on rarity, so it's very similar to ours. So I, I like Bing over Google for doing LinkedIn date searches. I just find it better. All right, so real quick, everybody is gonna get a copy of the, this presentation, but uh, Manatee had asked, Eric, can you please cut and paste the search string you were working on uh, within the chat comments. Could you do that before we jump to our next Absolutely. battle royale? Absolutely. I'll grab this big long one here. Cool. Eric, I can't thank you enough. Like I like I gave, you know, when I did the intro, you blow my mind when when you take the stage or when you're amongst friends. Um, and uh, again, that opportunity to, to go get a drink amongst friends is open anytime you decide you're coming back to Atlanta. Uh, I'd love to thank go you, to Bourbon you. and Barrel with you again. I think it's been a, I think it's been two years since we hit that up. Very well. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. I, I've enjoyed the first speakers. Looking forward to seeing uh, what what the what the folks that follow have to do. A lot of knowledge here today. So happy hunting, happy educating, and uh, if we can help you at any time. Or if I can personally help you, don't hesitate to email me directly. Uh, very much love being part of this, this community. Take care, folks. Thanks, Eric. Ten cup of you in here? Can you hear me? Uh, Brian is in here, and I can hear you. I haven't been able to jump to my room yet because I don't know where the. I, I gotta go to. A, I gotta go to a different room. All right, I'm off to the other room then too. Take care, my friend. Uh, bye, bye. Be well. Bye. <laughs>